Hi everyone and welcome to The Build Show. I'm John Peitzman, JP, certified high performance coach and creator of The Build Framework. I help individuals and teams all over the world thrive in their personal and professional lives. And as your host on this show, our aim is to help transform lives one guest at a time. And how do we do that? We do that by having amazing guests. And today is no different. We have with us Jamie Small. Jamie is a dedicated family man who grew up with an alcoholic father and schizophrenic mother. He has a background as a full-time rugby league player and admits to blowing every opportunity he had in his youth due to poor habits and his social life. He started working full-time for the first time at age 27 in an electrical apprenticeship and now owns and operates Pro Image Electrical where he has evolved to leading a thriving team dedicated to delivering excellence. He is passionate about self-improvement, the law of attraction, as well as taking saunas and ice baths in an effort to maximize his health and overall quality of life. He believes that happiness is progress. And I love that. We're happy today, so that means we're progressing today. Jamie, it's so great to have you. Welcome to The Build Show. Thank you. Thanks for the introduction. Yeah, absolutely. So tell us what you're excited about right now and maybe just a little bit more about your story that we didn't yeah. cover in that, that brief yeah, introduction. Yeah, well, obviously um, playing footy from a young age and you know being full-time from 24, 25, 26. And my last year at the Canary Bulldogs was politely asked to, to leave. Um, probably due How did to, that happen? <laughs> uh, looking back, my attitude was pretty bad. Um, I was always a hard trainer, but there was a lot of partying going on behind the scenes, which obviously impacted on my performance on the field, which was disappointing. Um, but I remember Steve Folks, which was the, the Canary Bulldogs coach, sitting down with me in my locker and he goes, Jamie, can we have a talk? And I bet you knew when he said, can we have a talk? <laughs> I knew what was coming. And at the time, with my attitude, I didn't really care. Right. And he said, you'll no longer be required at the club next year. And I'm like, no worries. And the opportunity for me was to go and play footy in France. I had an opportunity over there prior to being told to leave. So I went over there and had a season over there and had an opportunity from um, 2000 and whatever year it was, when I was 26, to have right. a, a, a following year. And um, I thought, you know what, it might be time to get back to Australia and start working because I'd never worked full time ever right. um, other than obviously playing footy. So got back and I had no money. I had like a hundred bucks, like literally my parents lived in Queensland. Obviously, I, I lost touch with my, my family quite young and I didn't know what I was doing. I was playing footy down the coast, living week to week on the money I was earning from there and living in a factory in Cornell in an office. So wow. I remember I was at my mate's place in Cronulla, sitting on his lounge watching probably Sal of a Century or something like that. <laughs> and I said to him, I said, I don't know what I'm gonna do with myself. And he goes, he was a big rig at Westpac at the time. He goes, well, how about you work in the office, mail office at Westpac? And I thought, yeah, I could do that. And I thought about it a little bit longer and I thought, you know what, there's no career pro progression there. So I made a few phone calls and I spoke to a few mates who just finished playing footy and spoke to a guy who just finished playing footy at Manly. And I said, oh, what are, you, what are you doing now? And he goes, well, I've just started an electrical apprenticeship. I said, oh, I could do that. I sort of, I grew up pulling apart, you know, irons and stuff like that. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, I could do that. So he gave me the boss's number. His name's Darren Steven, Stevens and I still stay in touch with him to this day. Great. He had about a hundred staff and I, I rang him up and um, we had about an hour conversation about footy, loved his footy. And I started on the Monday, and the rest was history. And on the back of that, I um, had he seen you playing footy? Did he know you as a uh, player he or knew, not? He knew. He made a few phone calls and right. worked out who I was. Gotcha. I wasn't a celebrity or anything like right. that. I was a bit of a B grader, but um, yeah, he made a few phone calls, worked out who I was, and you know, put a face to the name and all that sort of stuff. And the rest was history. And on the back of that, I met my now wife Nicole and I was dreading her asking me what I do for a living. Because <laughs> you didn't have an answer. I, you know, I was a first year apprentice and right. I was 27 years old and most guys that are my age have got uh, probably a property, a car and a career and I had none of that. So I was dreading her asking me that question and it eventually came around, so what do you do for a living? I'm like, oh, no. So I said, I'm a first year apprentice um, I was driving a green Hyundai XL, which was worth a thousand bucks. And I was living in a factory at Cornell. 
And we're now married 12 years later, and she says to me, I saw something in you. So we've now got two <laughs> kids have. and yeah, live in our dream home, and you know, it's, the rest is history. So yeah, it was really cool. Right, and what are you excited most about now, having gone through that journey as you look at the next chapter of your life? Um, now that I've finished my apprenticeship and I've been in business for about nine years and things are going really well, the more I'm learning and the more things like this I'm doing, I feel like my foot's getting pressed harder on the gas and things are happening a lot quicker opportunities come out and I'm just excited about obviously bringing up my kids my wife's got a successful business and just developing into other areas and side hustles we've got a podcast that's just started um, called the electrician's cut with a mate of mine Rob Bruss so that's exciting and I just love like you said in the um, intro progress is happiness so as long right. as I'm doing something that's progressing I'm happy love that yeah well as you know we use kind of this show to talk through the build framework and yep. really your journey with the build framework and giving our listeners some insights and inspiration from that. And for those of you who don't yet know what the build framework is all about, build is an acronym. It stands for build relationships, understand the business, implement strategies, lead and inspire and deliver excellence. And what I love about this show is that even though the framework stays the same, that every guest's story and journey with Build is unique. Yep. So if we dive right into it and we talk about building relationships, right? what are some of the most pivotal relationships that you've had in your journey? So the one that first springs to mind is a good friend of mine that I went to school with, Mark Alchi. So we used to sit next to each other in computer studies and giggle the whole way through class. <laughs> right. If you ask me what we're giggling about, I don't know, we're just giggling. Anyway, so we went to school together. He was a really good friend of mine. We sort of lost touch, you know, when we left school because he went on to do his thing, I wanted to do my thing. Anyway, um, when I was about a third or fourth year apprentice, he picked up the phone and called me. And he said, Jamie, what are you doing? I just finished playing footy, you know. So he goes, I'm having a year playing local A-grade footy at a team called Sutherland, which is A-grade. I said, mate, it's not for me, my body's broken, I've had enough. He goes, mate, it could be a good opportunity for you to meet some new people and I'll be able to help you if you want to start your own business. So anyway, I said, okay. So he goes, come over for a drink and we'll have a bit of a chat. So he sent me his address and I'm like, the address was in Barony Bay, like on the water. I'm like, wow, this is a really nice spot. And he was like 31 and so was I at the time. Right. So anyway, I've driven my little Hyundai XL to where <laughs> you his still house have that, is. Right? That a... And I've put up around the corner, I'm like, I, really, I don't want to pull in his driveway because I don't want to see my car. Anyway, so I've, I've parked around the corner, I've gone up to his house and I remember sitting on his balcony, looking at his amazing water view, 31 years old, you know, family, amazing business, Maserati, you know. I said, ouch, I'm like, how have you got all this? And he said to me, he goes, you really want to know? I said, mate, I really want to know. I said, I'm a fourth year apprentice, I want to know what you've done. So anyway, he went inside, he got a pen and paper and he wrote down three books and it was Think and Grow Rich, How to Win Friends and Influence People and Robert Kiyosaki's um, Rich Dad Poor Dad. He goes, go read these books and come back to me. So I read the books and he became my mentor. He actually literally started Pro Image Electrical for me. Um, right. He did all that stuff online, like, literally. And he became um, my mentor for, for a number of years. Just, he looks at things laterally. He was my sounding board. He gave me ideas. He, you know, created opportunities for me. He sadly passed away about four years ago and he left behind a, a, like a lovely family. <clears throat> I get upset just thinking about it. Mm. And um, yeah, so that was really sad, <clears throat> really sad. And I sort of lost my mentor in him. But what I found was, is that I don't need one person to be a mentor. I can get a mentor from multiple different people. Say the way you do business, the way you look after your family, the way you look after your health. Right. So that accumulation was of all yeah, the different just, best instead practices. Instead of just saying, right. you know, you're going to be the one that's my mentor, I get that from a lot of people now. So right. that I, I believe that me um, having that drink with him on that day was a sliding door moment in my life. Yes. And without that happening, I wouldn't be sitting here today. Right. Yeah. Amazing. So yeah, you never know is. those those phone calls, those relationships yeah, that you kind just, of lean into what they're going to mature into. Totally. And if I didn't go that time and I could could have quite easily not gone there, right. things would have been completely different. Right. Yeah. yeah. It's amazing those yeah. decisions we made. Yeah, totally. How about moving on to understand the business, right? So um, you have obviously a lot of understandings having grown the business to where it is now yeah. and starting from where you did and the yeah. journey you went through, but what are some key understandings that you have that you think are appropriate to share with our listeners here today? So we're obviously electricians, yeah. um, but 
I think what we don't understand or a lot of electrical companies don't understand is people are letting you in their home and usually somebody's home is their most important asset. So I think you need to appreciate that and they've given you the trust to come into their home. Right. So I think customer service is a massive part of the electrical or trade business that a lot yes. of people go unnoticed. Because um, it doesn't matter how good an electrician you are, if you're not a good bloke, people aren't gonna wanna work with you. Right. So customer service is a big part of that, getting your invoices out on time, following up your quotes, making sure you use your manners, turning up on time, all those simple things that a lot of guys don't do. And a lot of trades have got a really bad reputation for. So we're passionate in trying to exceed expectations. And at ProMage Electrical, we're getting text messages, emails, reviews all the time with clients letting me know about how good our staff are. Right. And obviously forward that onto the guys so they feel good. There's a bit of a competition between the boys. Yep. Healthy Who competition get, yeah, is always great. good. Yeah, it's really cool. So I'm obviously proud of them and I take that as a personal compliment. If someone says, um, Jared or Brad did a really good job, um, hopefully that reflects on my leadership, you know? Yeah. So, well, it's your brand, right? It's your yeah. company. It's our, all part of the family. Yeah. And we've got a policy, you know, like if you, you don't fit into our culture, regardless of how good electrician you are, you're not going to last and you're not going to be sacked. Usually what will happen is the guys will squeeze them out because they don't fit in with the culture of our team. Right. And because we're working with each other more than we're probably spending time with our family, I think it's important to come to work and really enjoy who you're working with. And there's banter and you know all sorts yeah. of fun stuff. And I'm really trying to implement the footy culture into the workplace. Um, and we're, we're actually starting next week. We're doing a, a group personal training session. So I was going to say, do you have a company team that you play? <laughs> not enough people, we, right? <laughs> no, not, not yet. No, so there's a, we've got a team of you know, eight, which right. is really cool. But we're all going training on a Wednesday morning to create a bit of competition, get your heart rates up. Credit, you know, like we're, we're doing some thinking as part of the training, which is really cool, like shooting hoops and chess and stuff like yeah. that. So oh, great. everyone's thinking, you know, so hopefully when we go to work, we can talk about something beyond just work. Yes. Yeah. And it's that culture, like you said, totally, that community. Yeah. It's so totally, important. Totally, yeah. It, it is, yeah. Right. And then you can have that conversation once where it's not working out. They come in and say, well, we have to have that talk. Yeah. Your services are no longer required yeah. next year, right? Yeah. <laughs> like well, the talks you had. Because you've, <laughs> made, you've right. created a relationship, but hopefully that they leave before I need to have that right. conversation because the guys won't allow it. Exactly. And yeah. the community just will kind of, like you said, squeeze it out. It just totally. will be something that they find a different path that's more, you know, uh, aligned with what they want. 100%. Awesome. Yeah. So if we move on to implementing strategies, right? There's a lot of strategies I'm sure you have, both personally and professionally. Um, what are some strategies that you think have helped you become so successful in your life? Um, well, I think Instagram, of all places, we do a lot of marketing on Instagram. And what I see on Instagram is a lot of people are marketing the same way. It's just boring, it's bland. You've got a photo of your logo, you've got a photo of your team, past and current jobs. Right. And it's great, and we do do that. Sure. But I think if you can create a bit of education, so on Instagram we try and educate our followers on why we do the things the way we do them, you know, DIY jobs and why we may be more expensive versus the guy that's cheaper is because right. we do things right. Um, and we try and implement some comedy. So yeah. I think marketing is so serious these days. Um, if you can put a smile on someone's face, absolutely, you're going a long way towards potentially getting their business or getting them to talk about you. So at ProMage Electrical, on our Instagram page, if you follow us on Instagram, we try and do things like music parodies and you know funny <laughs> things and team events. Well, and we've just done one to Call Me Maybe. I did it yesterday, actually, so you should check it out. It's pretty funny. Well, I think it's funny. A lot of people <laughs> have uh, grilled me for it, but if people are talking about it, it's working. And if, pe if I can make fun of myself and it means that it um, equates to more business, so be it. Right. So trying to put a smile on someone's face um, and education, right. they're the key things that we're trying to implement daily. Yeah, and everyone sees that you're human then too, right? Yeah. That's a shared experience, yeah. so they can be more connected to the real yeah. kind of community that you're trying to foster, yeah. which is amazing. Well, that's another thing as well. You know, I think we've got our logo, we're advertising that we're people. So if we put faces on Instagram and all our marketing, people feel like they know us before we come. So they're kind of expecting who's coming to the door. Right. Knowing that, you know, I'm a family man, you know, all the guys have got family, so we're actually doing, we're, we've got this business to generate income for our families. Right, Yeah. great. 
If we switch to the personal side of things, what are some strategies? You talked about family being so important, right? Yeah. And those non-negotiables with your kids and the rest of it. What are some strategies that you've implemented on the personal side that you think are so important to have that integration yeah. and balanced yeah. success? So I think the big thing, I hear a lot of guys say, I want to work hard while my kids are young and so we can enjoy it later. But I disagree with that. I think you need to build the foundation with your kids before they're seven so that when they're older and they're off doing their own thing, they come back. So mm -hmm. I suppose the strategy at home, particularly with my children, is be around as much as possible. When they ask me to do something, regardless of how tired or sore or whatever I am, I do it. Because there'll be a point when they're 14, 15, 16, and they're off with their friends or girlfriends or whatever, where they're not gonna ask me. So when they ask me to do something, I do it. Right. And I try and do that, my wife, you know, I'm off usually playing with the kids and you know, I try and sort of balance that, that's tricky. But you know, I try and, Whenever they ask me, I do it. Right, regardless. drop everything and have that be yeah. the priority. Obviously, work's a priority as well. Like right. if I'm on a call, sure. I'll just say, give me a minute. Right. But if they ask me to go for a swim, I'm out there. If they want to fish, I'm out there, you know? Right. Uh, right. Just experience those little things together so we can sort of grow up together and we've got that strong foundation of memory. Right, 100%. And it's so important to act on that, not just do the lip service to it, right? Because totally. a lot of people talk that talk, but they don't walk the walk. At the yeah. end of the day, they're actually not spending the time. Yeah. So um, that's very um, inspi inspiring. Yeah, well, it doesn't that. work perfectly every time, right. but that's my strategy. Yeah, no, well, you have to have the strategy yeah, in order right. to be able to follow something, right? Uh, that's so it. you have I'm, that light I'm, that you can walk towards. I'm and totally aware of it every day, yeah. Awesome. So now, if we move on to the next letter, which is L, leading and inspiring, how do you lead and inspire every day? So at home, I'll start with at home because my family's my priority, is yeah. I lead at home by trying to be the, obviously the, the breadwinner. Obviously I'm responsible for our mortgage and all, and all the bills and all that. Obviously my wife works as well, but um, getting up early every morning, training, you know, like being proactive with what's going around the house. I'm doing so much around the house, renovating, you know, all that sort of stuff. Being, a, being around my kids, like sitting down, I'll tell you a story at the end about you know, something that happened with my, my son, just trying to be a hero for my kids. And if I can you know, be the person they wanna be, obviously I'm leading them. And I say to them, um, my job as a parent is to keep you safe and develop you into the best man I can. So right. if I can do those two things, They'll be good. It's up to them, right? It's up to them. I want to for set, create the foundation for them to have a really good life. And at work, that's um, obviously I'm up every morning. I train every morning before work. I've got a responsibility as a business owner to make sure there's work coming in the door all the time. So I want to make the guy, make sure the guys feel confident, especially throughout the pandemic, that you know there's going right. to be work there. Um, and we have toolbox talks to make them feel like they're secure in their job. And I sort of say to them, guys, I've got this. I'll do whatever it takes to make sure there's work and there's work ongoing for all of you guys. Um, and, you know, like, I suppose turning up to work and they've known that I've done, been up two or three hours before I'm at work. Right. So I'm not yawning and tired, you know. I'm usually upbeat. Sometimes I'm tired because I've been up early. Sure. But um, just trying to be inspiring. And not only at work, if anyone needs a hand outside work with family or, you know, something where... It's that community thing totally, that you talked about, right? The family. We're there for you. And that's right. why we've trained, we've started the training together. So the guys can all get fit together. It's good for their lifestyle. If you've got a healthy team, you've got a proactive team. Right. I love that. Yeah. If you have a healthy team, you have a proactive yeah, team. Yeah, man. There you go. <laughs> Write that down. <laughs> that's right. So that leads to delivering excellence, yeah. right? So what is excellence to you and how do you ensure that you deliver excellence every day? So excellence starts with me at 4.45 in the morning. I set my alarm at 4.45 and the key is... If you to get up. <laughs> to get up. If you hit that snooze, snooze button, it's over. you've cheated yourself straight away. And although only you know about it, your subconscious knows that you cheated yourself. So never cheat yourself. So I'm up early, no water, protein shake, my vitamins, I'm, I'm out the door, I train, I'm at, back to the office for a protein shake. I usually have a stretch, then I'm at, I'm at work, and that sets me up for the day. So if I do that really well every day. Is that day, every day then, or three times a week? So out, of the, out of the five days, I right. do Monday, Tuesday, Thursday, Friday. Right. On the Wednesday, I try and get up late and have a bit of it, like I see the kids in the morning, right. so I can have breakfast with them. I'm usually out the door anyway um, before they get up, so I try and 
hold like start my day a little bit later so I can enjoy the morning with them, see them, or hopefully send them off to school if I have time. Um, but if I can do that daily, it sort of sets me up for a really good life. And when I'm home, when the kids go to bed, I'm in the sauna and a ice bath, just trying to right. really maximise that. And, and you were saying before we started the shoot that your kids do that with you sometimes, right? Yeah, so I try and get the, like, I'm in the sauna three to five times a week, so, yeah. and it's a real mental challenge for me because it's hard to be in there. The hotter it is, the harder it is, so I want to get out there. And I try and get my kids in there if they're sick, you know, they sort of clear them up with a bit of um, eucalyptus or whatever. Sure. Um, and they're always, we're always trying to outdo each other. So an example of it was, you know, after 20 minutes, we usually get three spoons of water on the, on the hot rocks. And I was in there with my two sons the other day, and we usually do like 20 breaths um, standing right. up when it's really hot to finish. Because I say to the boys, you always got to do some ex something extra to be better. Anyway, I got to like 20 breaths, and my eldest son Hudson goes, I'm out. So he left, and my <laughs> younger son, Asher, who's six, he's a tiny little kid, and he's like, I'm staying in. I'm like, well, I can't leave. Right, right, be outdone like, well, by, <laughs> right, exactly. I'm supposed to be the leader. Son. So anyway, he's in there and he's got to 20, 21. We got to like 90 breaths. And at this point, I'm like, I need to get out of here. Break down like, the it's door. It's <laughs> really hot in here. Like we're dripping with sweat. And Hudson's at the door looking in. And Ash is looking out at him going, I'm still in here. <laughs> anyway, we got to like 90, 91. And I'm like, I'm out. He wanted to keep going. So he cracked me and he's six years old. Right. And he still reminds me of him doing that to this day. <laughs> It'll be a story he repeats yeah, over and over he's again. He's a tough little kid and hopefully yeah. they're getting tougher. And I think tough, being tough on your kids is tough love. And I think it will be important for them to sort of set them apart from the rest when they're older. Right. There was another story you mentioned earlier. Was that about being a hero or something that you wanted to share? Well, I want to try and be their hero, you know, yeah. so I want to make sure that they see me out training and you know, exercising and doing stuff with them so that when I go to school to pick them up, they don't go, oh, here's dad. They're like, dad, you know, they're really excited to see me because they're proud of me. Right. So that's a big part. And obviously being fit and healthy is a, a big part of that. I want a successful business. And I often say to my, my wife, I said, I don't want to be another bear bum in the shower. And what I mean by that is I don't just want to be a sparky. I want to sort of represent something as a good parent. And we've obviously started the podcast now with Rob called the Electricians Co-op, which is designed around helping other electricians grow their business. So if I can do these little things and obviously uh, opportunities like this, you know, it makes, it makes me a little bit better in my mind that I'm sort of doing a little bit more than just being a sparky. Right. So I want them to be proud of me. And <clears throat> I suppose I want my wife to sort of look at me and be inspired to sort of grow her business as well, because she's got a thriving business. And I would like to think that I've sort of helped somewhere along the way with that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you have clearly. So. I, she probably won't openly say that to me, but... She always saw something in you, though. Yeah, she, she told us that, she said, right? <laughs> she, she got interviewed the other day in this wedding magazine, and I was mentioned in that, so I was like, yes. But, um, yeah, obviously, she's proud of what she's done, and she has done it, and I like to think I've sort of helped her along the way, maybe right. subconsciously, I don't know, but... Yeah. Yeah, she's, well, just having she's that partnership, well. we all help each other, right? In partnership, totally. just to be our best selves, yeah. right? And that support, even though it's not maybe hands-on tactical, it's yeah. at least, like you said, inspirational. And yeah. um, you're part of that foundation, right? That helps to secure a, a more successful future. Totally, so. yeah. Are there any other words of wisdom or pearls of wisdom that you have that you haven't shared that you'd like to share with our listeners here today? I think doing, to, to get anything worthwhile, you've got to suffer. And I, I listen to David Goggins and all those sort of guys. and. Anything worthwhile is hard. If you get rich quick, you can easily lose it. I think it's a daily grind and it's a slow process. So I think if you do all the little things right every day, it has a compounding effect in your life, whether it be health, reading a book, listening to audio books, doing, um, having, taking, making the most of opportunities like this, doing stuff with your kids. I think fast forward 20 years and you're successful. It's not a coincidence because right. you've done It's not these overnight things that, success, no, right? It took 20 yeah, years to yeah. get that overnight success. And you hear right. those stories all the time about right. like Michael Jordan, Kobe Bryant, LeBron yeah. James, you know. Yeah, it's because of their work ethic and their yeah. practice and their it's dedication. It's all the things done behind the scenes is uh, they're rewarded for in public. So yeah. I think if you do all the little things every day, and I'm by far not perfect, I'm still learning, obviously. Um, just reading, implementing strategies and looking for opportunities. Like when I bumped into Rob, you know, the, um, Rob Bruss from Go All In, 
bumped into the gym and told him he wanted to start a podcast. That was another sliding door moment. The next right. week we started a podcast. There it is. But I was actually looking for opportunity to do that. Right. Whereas if I went into the gym with the blinkers on, um, I would have blown that, you know? Right. So that was another sliding door moment and it'll be pivotable in, my, pivotable in my life. Right, great. And finally, how can people get a hold of you if they want to have further conversations? Um, so at, on Instagram, at Pro Image Electrical, um, okay. we're really responsive on that. Facebook, you can get me on via our website at proimageelectrical.com.au. Great. Uh, but yeah, follow us on Instagram. Hopefully there's some funny stuff. You might learn <laughs> something as well, but... Yeah, I know. In terms of electrical, it's pretty bland, but we try and we try to spice it, it up. up. We're trying to spice it up. Great. Yeah. Well, you've livened up today for sure. Thank you so yeah. much for joining us Thanks on the sure. show. Appreciate it. Thank all of you for joining us here as well. For more great resources to help you become your best self, including free worksheets and downloads, make sure to check out thebuildframework.com. That's it for this episode. I'm JP. We'll see you next time on the Build Show.